Hey, it's been a while. It's been quite some time since we've put a video out and there's a couple of reasons why and we'll get to explaining those later. Actually, maybe we'll talk about the first reason now. One of the reasons that uh, things have been a bit difficult lately has been the weather and obviously today looks like a glorious day and it is but for the past month the weather was just atrocious. It was so cold. We were low teens, mid teens in temperatures which is just really cold. We're meant to be in summer now. We are obviously at the end of December now so we've been in summer for a month now and it hasn't been that way. We got a few days that were really warm and then it just went cold and our gardens have been atrocious for it to be honest. It's been a bit disheartening uh, and things that should be thriving we should have been planting a whole bunch of stuff and it just we started seedlings and they just all died off because the weather just wasn't playing as it normally does at this time of year so uh, it's been ridiculous and then it's gone from being super cold to weather in the 30s uh, late 30s which is just super hot so everything has really struggled because there was no progression in the temperature as we went from colder weather to warmer weather um, so you'll see that reflected throughout uh, the little tour that I'm about to give you uh, but you know we're doing the best we can we're not at a point now where we're using our gardens to survive but I can imagine for those of you out there that are farmers or those of you that are just living off your homestead and the food that you're growing is what you're surviving on, it must have been a really difficult period for anyone living in this area. So big props to those of you that are doing it and eventually we'd like to get there. I guess that as our first year going through the seasons here, it was pretty disheartening for us. So we didn't pull the camera out as much as what we intended on doing so. Uh, because it all felt like failure after failure a bit so uh, that explains part of why we haven't put a video out lately um, and then we'll talk about the other a reason later on which is a bit more technical I don't know anyway we'll give everyone a tour and show you what it's looking like now because it's a bit of a stopping point where we're about to rip everything out and start again so see befores and afters I guess So we talked about our snow peas on quite a few of the last videos. The snow peas were our best growing crop of the sort of winter to spring months. And now after a few really hot days and just sort of reaching the end of their, their lifespan, uh, we're left with, with this. So we've got these ones over here, which were our regular snow peas. They were planted just a little bit after our giant snow peas. So these ones lasted a little bit longer. Uh, than the other ones did but oh my god I absolutely lived off snow for the last few months so today we'll come through and we'll rip this out and we'll start afresh with a new bed and see what we're going to pop in there next it was a good spot I really liked having the trellis going up uh, we'll probably pull that down for starters because it was a terrible um, just spur of the moment decision to pop it up there we didn't build it really well um, but we might reinvigorate and do something similar in the future Here is the other snow peas that we grew this year. They were the Japanese snow peas, so the Japanese giant snow peas. So they were sort of as big as my hand span, some of them even bigger, and they were so delicious. We had to cut them back so many times because they just grew overly abundant and then end up snapping themselves and growing um, down. But so I think that this area wasn't the best option for them. But before we grew this year's snow peas, we had failed every single time we tried to grow them in the past. So we had no idea how abundant they would be this time. Um, so they've obviously gone, gone to the dogs as well. Uh, but hopefully we will bring these back in, in near future because again, they were so delicious. And I reckon that I should be a snow pea by now with the amount that we ate. Through this area here, we've got the broad beans. So again, the broad beans were probably our second best crop and they just went bonkers and we ate so many of them and then clearly they've reached the end of the days as well they snapped with the wind a lot so we're going to have to find a better way to spring them up next time so they don't uh, fall over and snap themselves so much
The artichokes have grown kind of weird in that they were just not there and then suddenly we had two or three heads and then nothing much happened for ages and then we stopped paying attention to it and we looked back out and there was just so many heads and a lot of them have like opened up and we've missed the missed the boat on them but they're kind of fun to grow and I really enjoy when they do go to flower because they get this purple purple look to them and I just think they're really pretty so I need to show everyone what looks like an alien in the garden. It's kind of creepy and it reminds me of when Mars Attacks, that, that movie came out and about their brains, it was all very gross. Um, have you ever grown a cabbage and then just let it go to, seed, go to seed or overgrown or whatever the hell it's done? Because this thing looks like it's an alien. It's actually opened up a bit more since the other day, but uh, all of this, just looked like brains all the other day. It was so gross. We were kind of freaked out by it. Something's making a lot of noise down here. Hey cat, what are you doing? I think he's eating the cabbage. <laughs> what are you doing? Crazy weirdo. So pretty much everything in the beds have gone to seed now. Uh, we ate so much of everything. It was quite abundant through the, the spring months. Um, heaps of silver beet and rainbow chard. We had all sorts of kinds of lettuce growing. Um, and yeah, everything kind of probably grew too much for the two of us, but that's all right. We, we ended up wasting a bit, but you live and learn these things so we might just grow a little bit less and maybe a little bit more varieties of other things in the future but uh that was pretty good but you can see it's just a monstrosity behind me so it's uh gonna be a fair bit of work to rip it all out and start again soon but that's cool we'll get onto it the apricots have been super abundant and we've made a lot of jam that we've been giving away as gifts the peaches are just starting to get towards ripening up too and the grapes are also giving it a really good go this year Hey Miggy, what you up to? I'm just trying to protect our uh, figs. I was going to try to think of a fun name for them. Babies. Our, our beautiful treasures of the fig tree. <laughs> uh, well, last year I think that we might have maybe got about I reckon it, a tenth of what the tree produced and the, the other 90% went to the birds. So happy to share some, but I probably want more than 10% this year. <laughs> the weather is scorching again today, so we've decided the best use of our time we have before we burst into flames is to clear this old snow pea area and set it up for a few baby tomatoes that we've picked up recently. We waited much longer than we intended to between buying them and playing them, so fingers crossed they survive. So the other main reason we mentioned earlier to explain why it's been a while between videos is that the laptop that we used to edit on decided to call it a day and crashed. Luckily we were able to do a factory reset and got the use of the laptop back eventually, but everything that hadn't been saved to hard drives was lost. It's a timely reminder for everyone to save things to backup drives often. And thankfully we only lost a little bit of the newer footage we'd taken, but yeah, it was a bit of a heartbreaker and a killer of motivation for creating new content for a while. We thought these guys were going to die because we didn't plant them for too long, but if you look at this one, he's managed to grow a tomato for some reason. Anyway, some reason. yeah, I can't believe they survived, but here we are. All right, so what what tomatoes do we have on that side? We have, oh, hard to say ones. We have tomato, Prince, Principe Borghese. Which one's that? That is this one. And how high does he grow? This little one. Yeah, let's see if I can do it. Do you want me to turn it? Turn it. There we go. And he was 1.5 high. He is 60 centimeters. 60 high. centimeters that one. Oh, maybe I'll swap these then and put 60 centimeters near that one. Yeah, I reckon. And uh, and then we've got tomato gross lis lisse. That just looks like a normal kind of tomato. That looks like a gourmet, doesn't it? Gourmet. And he's 1.5, that one? 1.5. All right. And over this side, we have 
the truss sweet which grows 1.5 oh wait oh, sorry he was 1.8 yeah that's and good. then this one is the aunt ruby's german green let's get him in the ground and then i think it's time to go somewhere cool after that because it is hot it's getting hotter here so hot We're popping straw down to help keep the weeds down, but also to try and help keep moisture in the ground during these super hot days. And this type of straw mix is actually made specifically for that apparently. So it's a few days after the last time we filmed. Um, we are in the new year now, so happy new year, everybody. Happy new year. And I don't think we mentioned to hopefully that everyone had a good Christmas on the last bit as well, but um, Merry Christmas, if Merry we haven't talked about it already. Merry Chrysler. Merry Chrysler. Um, we have not been doing anything outdoors for the last few days because the temperature went whoosh, back up to like the high 30s again much too hot for our pasty little skin much too hot and being in australia the sun is just got that ozone hole <laughs> and we cop it really bad so uh, we are slip slop slapped covered in sunscreen from head to toe um, and even though the temperature's a lot lower today um, i think you said the uv rating is like 10 or something Yep, and they recommend sunscreen for anything over about two. So yep. <laughs> that's, that's, that's Australia life. Um, so, what's today's plan? So we're gonna tackle this schmozzle. That's right. It's a schmozzle again. <laughs> yeah, look, it's not like it actually isn't all weeds this time. It's actually like mostly vegetables that have just gotten quite overgrown. Yeah, it's all gone so to see. It's actually not a schmozzle. It's just a very like overgrown veggie garden. It's fine. Yeah. So Betty spent a lot of time planning what's going to go into it next. I don't know if we'll get to that today because um, it's a bit of a task today, but that might be the next thing. But, and we're lazy. Uh, well, it's the Christmas <laughs> holidays. We're, we're off work at the moment. It's holidays. We can't be working too hard. Lazy. <laughs> I don't know. I just want to get back to sleep. <laughs> We've had a lot of a lot of rest time over the, the Christmas break, which has been very well needed. So good. We haven't really had holidays since we moved up here, so it's been quite nice to take advantage of it. And with the heat the way it's been, there's just you, you couldn't do anything else anyway, so mm -hmm. I don't feel too bad about it. No. Alright, well let's get stuck into this then. The ground's so hot. <laughs> they look edible, if not the little small. They do look pretty good. What are you doing? Get it away. Do you want to get a basket? Yeah, sure. I don't reckon that's helping us clean up the beds, boy. Terrible. He's so dirty. <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> I just my lip? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> A bountiful feast. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely looks edible. Just tiny. Just little. I think we need to let them sit to cure or something as well. Yeah. Whoa, look at him. 
him. Nice. Our first successful go at growing any kind of like onion family. We've never had any luck before when we were in St Kilda. Don't know whether it was just us, whether it was the location, don't know. But yay! I think they need a longer time to grow and we just never had enough sunlight for the, the length of time that they needed. We also planted these heaps like late in the season as well. So we always knew these weren't probably gonna do super well, but to be honest, they've gone better than I thought they would. Yeah, same. I thought they'd just be all rotten and gross. Nice. Yeah. Hang them upside down and they dry up. What did you find? What did you find? A massive frog. Oh my god, he just came out of the compost. You are big! He seems alright. Just went on a flying trip out of the compost, did he? Yeah, I threw a shovel of the compost in the garden and he was like in there. <laughs> So Betty's been doing a great job turning over the soil through this bed. We've uh, watered it down quite a lot and we've added some, some compost and she keeps on turning it and we're just making sure it's hydrated all the way through before we start doing anything else. And then this bed over here was the one that was covered in cardboard. So it's been covered in cardboard for a few months and we haven't really weeded it and it's done an awesome job at keeping the weeds down. There's a bit of grass that's grown up the end but that's Bit of grass that's grown up the end, but that's about the main thing. And then some hollyhocks have snuck into some gaps uh, in the in the cardboard. So we'll transplant them and see if we can save them somewhere else because they're always pretty. We're having our first go with an irrigation system that we're putting together ourselves from pieces that we got from the hardware store. We're using 13mm pipe with pieces that fit that and then we got an automatic timer to put on the tap so we can set it off to go when we want it, which would be really good if we're ever away and not home to do the watering. You can buy pegs that are made for the pipe, which probably fit a little bit better, but this was way cheaper to buy these weed matting pegs and use those instead, which will work for us. We have one of these little snipping tools that are made to cut slightly smaller pipe that we got in a misting system that we haven't set up yet, and it was so simple and worked a treat. Alright, ready? Moment of truth. Is it gonna work? The water's coming out. Yes! It's alive! Excellent. My dodgy drill holes worked. Excellent. That's much more efficient than buying those things that were like a dollar fifty each. Starting to starting to drip down here. Yeah, it'll probably take some time to get all the way down maybe. Not coming out up here yet. But also I think it's go having to go slightly uphill to get out there, so interesting. It's coming out on the lower end of them over here. And over there. It's just not quite making it up to the ends yet. That might be something we'll have to troubleshoot. Maybe we'll need to run a second hose. Yeah, we might need to run a second one over and the ends. To the ends up this side. Because mm. it is uphill. Didn't really consider that it's not like obviously uphill, but it is. Like it, there is a, a change in the elevation from this end to that end. So we'll probably have to run that. But on the plus side, Pretty 
good for a, for a start with us not knowing what we were doing and like it's working it's working really well over here where it's closer to the tap so I think that might be something we'll need to do it's going off tap over here because we have to have the pressure a bit higher over here but yeah not quite working up this end so we might need to run a second hose across the top cats come and check it out And a little drinky drink. <laughs> a quick tip that's made a world of difference today that we've figured out is using a heat gun to just heat the ends of the hose bits before trying to put them on the um, teeth components or the bell and stuff like that. Uh, it just makes sliding them on about a thousand times easier than what it was yesterday. Yesterday we were getting blisters and stuff from just trying to manhandle it on. And it was easier because it was a very hot day yesterday, but today's just a tad cooler and things weren't going on as easy. And we decided to pull the heat gun out and it was the best thing we could have done. So recommend doing that from the get-go next time. Who knew my cosplay heat gun would come in handy for things other than costumes? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we've added this extra, uh, we've added this extra piece on down the end. So hopefully we can get the water to go up from both directions now, so we'll see how that goes. So hopefully that might just do the trick. Let's give it a try. It's working well on these ones now. So this one's working fairly okay. It's slow, but it's working fairly okay. As we get a little bit further away from the tap, the top end of the beds that are higher aren't working as well but then you get down the end and it seems like it's actually working semi okay down the end interesting not a total failure not a total success hmm hmm troubleshooting required all right we'll look into it and get back to but let's plant out let's plant all right, let's plan. So I've drawn up a little plan of what we had planted out last season. And I've done a bit of research on what works well in the last season's planting area, if that makes sense. So what, you know, nutrients the old plants would have put out into the soil and etc. And so then I've done a new plan for this season and some companion planting and stuff like that. So. We've planted out a lot of seeds and some seedlings that we had in pots, though we aren't super confident they'll make the transition over as they've been battered around pretty badly with the heat recently. A couple of different plants were able to survive the cull also. We'll give you all an update on how they're all going in our next garden video.